Welcome back all. Um, this is part two of my lecture on metamorphosis. I call this metamorphosis a critique of the politics of abandonment. Right, so we all metamorphose sometimes to our disadvantage and when it happens uh, there is abandonment. Okay, and abandonment is of various kinds. A field such as disability studies has plenty to say about it because one on its own it has generated uh, uh, excellent schemes of knowledge connected to it and second it has the rare privilege of borrowing from uh, other fields such as feminism, um, postcolonial theory and, and, and much more. Okay, that's the crux of the uh, lecture today. Right, so um, let me read the first paragraph of the story. When Gregor Samsa awoke one morning from troubled dreams, he found himself transformed in his bed into a monstrous insect. He was lying on his hard shell-like bag and by lifting his head, head a little, he could see his curled brown belly divided by stiff arching ribs, on top of which the bed quilt was preca precariously poised and seemed about to slide off completely. His numerous legs, which were pathetically thin compared to the rest of his bulk, uh, danced helplessly uh, before his eyes. What has happened to me? He thought. Right, so that's the quote, uh, and this is uh, this is what happened to our young man Gregor uh, as he awoke from a dream, uh, and this can happen to all of us. Uh, well, we may not get up uh, like uh, as an insect, but may we may get up feeling like one. Okay. Um, as I told in my previous lecture, our existence is punctuated by illnesses, accidents, unknown events, referee, reveries, delusions, and uh, and uh, external slaughter, uh, punishment, torture, and debilities of various kinds that can make us um, undergo this. Uh, peculiar feeling, okay? Uh, and when that happens, when people slowly drift into uh, such a condition, what happens? One possibility is that can happen is abandon, abandonment by abjection, AB, abjection, abject, abject poverty. Right, abject poverty, well, the poverty that, um, in a sense, uh, which cannot be imagined, but which can be kept out, out of sight, nevertheless, build a wall so that, uh, you know, those, the slum is not visible. Uh, worse, in the worst case, demolish them and uh, just send them off somewhere so out of sight, out of mind, that kind of abjection can happen. Um, Julia Kristeva, um, um, a feminist philosopher, uh, is great because she has offered us very, very useful tools in uh, uh, understanding abjection. How? Well, uh, Consider the following, um, following incidents or uh, cases, case studies, as it were. Um, uh, a person died. Now, 
uh, before a minute he or she was a living person. Now she is a corpse. So we start talking about that corpse. He was, she was, great person. Um, so uh, for the dear ones, it's loss. Passed away, she passed away. Uh, so, how do you uh, separate, uh, how do you start distancing yourself, ourselves from that corpse? Uh, first, you call that person now a corpse. And all human civilizations have invented rituals to make that happen. Otherwise, Look at this, if such rituals don't exist, then it is entirely possible that we don't let that corpse go. We, we, st we will still treat it as, uh, it as he or she, okay? As dangerous as that. Okay, so this is one example. Consider the second example. Uh, we, we, uh, when, when I come to this lecture, I put on my jean and put, uh, I mean, comb my hair and uh, come with my best fit. Um, and the best fit, there's no one definition of best fit and it can be a million varieties. But nevertheless, we all would like to present our best self to others. However, if I'm critically unwell and is not able to handle uh, my, my own body and my own personhood which I want to project to others, then I might look disheveled, my body may be leaking, uh, meaning saliva, drooling, uh, lack of control over urine, feces, sweat, tears and uh, uh, my posture and so on. Sometimes this, if there may be no control over thoughts, uh, mind, emotion and rational thinking. And the sense of I may also disappear with dementia and so on. All these things can happen. And when they happen, when people don't consider that person who is undergoing these things altogether or one of those, they may consider that person as less human, dehumanization. And, that, and, and at that moment, uh, abjection can happen. Okay? Uh, uh, um, Christopher also uh, talks about uh, sense of control over our uh, inner objects such as saliva, um, uh, you know, feces and so on. So once they come out, uh, we quickly would like to uh, dispose them so that uh, we maintain uh, one, cleanliness, hygiene for sure, but more importantly, a sense of difference from animality. Uh, <clears throat> for example, we uh, make bathrooms and other architectures to hide ourselves doing certain things which we don't want other humans to see, to uh, uh, not make it explicit and so on. And that makes humanity uh, possible and that's our, uh, you know, and that thought keeps evolving, sense of privacy, humanness, and sense of, you know, dignity, all keep changing uh, time to time. And it's a historical, cultural idea. Nevertheless, uh, 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 a loss of grip over it, uh, uh, a slight fall from that human position, a dip into human, uh, animality, as it were, is also seen as abjection. Abjection. Okay. 
So um, uh, taking these cues, what happen, What happens here? Gregor, well, uh, after becoming and reass being reassured that his body is no more the same and it um, it looks odd and different and animal animalistic. Okay, uh, he's still human inside. He's still thinking about his work and work-related worries. He's still thinking about uh, working for his family. He still wants to integrate, uh, go and hug his mom. Uh, he's still holding on to the picture of a beautiful girl whom, uh, uh, whom, whose photo he's keeping on, to, on the mantelpiece out there. Okay? So, but uh, uh, he's uh, unable to appreciate uh, the most exquisite uh, piece of music, a uh, uh, violin uh, played by his sister, and, uh, and, and so on, so on, and so on. But at some point, he reconciles to his new non-human body. In part two of the uh, story, he, he uh, in fact, would like to have more space in the uh, in the in the dark room, dingy room, where he is l placed, where he can do a little bit of exercise uh, uh, of a kind that is unique to his new body, such as uh, standing erect to the roof, you know, uh, with his worm body and uh, cozying up under the sofa and so on. So you see, uh, when things become different, uh, um, first of all, uh, nobody is willing to entertain him amidst their mist because his, the, the spectacle, he looks like a worm, yeah? Uh, so uh, he's bleeding. He's uh, you know he's drooling all the time. I can't stand that spectacle. People may say, and then abandon uh, a leper, a person with leprosy, and they can say outrageous things in front of that person, although that person does not exist because in their mind abjection has already happened. A leper is less than a human, is not same as me. And that attitude has already crept in. So they, 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 they for sure will begin finding a dingy room for this guy, uh, like the one Gregor is cast into. Got it? So, this is a uh, kind of human-animal continuum and if you are in the latter, then abjection, um, uh, abjection happens. Uh, uh, abandonment based on that abjection can happen. So, this, has, this takes us very, very, uh, bring us a, a very important uh, concept. Uh, the uh, humanity animality problem. You know what uh, uh, the dif the differences the human and the animal is not that definite all the time. For example, um, you know um, I'm using this braille paper now, uh, and uh, if you keep me another sheet here, a uh, sheet of paper. And that paper will not have any value for me because this braille contains some notes and thoughts uh, uh, and uh, scribbles that I have uh, put down for this lecture. But, but, but um, uh, if, if that braille note is something else, say something in some other language, some poetry, 
which is not relevant for this lecture. I'm going to cast it aside or keep it somewhere and we'll check out it later. So, um, so we, uh, uh, a, a room can be a dining hall, a bedroom, um, um, you know, a tennis, a sport room or a gathering room, you know, it depends on how we look at it. Okay, but uh, <clears throat> when in abjection that great um, uh, the, that kind of habitation that we do quickly disappears. You are uh, assigned to something, you are molded into something which you don't want to, which you don't necessarily appreciate. But that kind of distinction, um, anyway, that blind chap, he cannot see, yeah? so I can switch off the light without his permission. Uh, oh, anyway, he's deaf. Uh, I can't, I don't have to, you know, um, uh, care about him uh, when I uh, burst a cracker. So, uh, because the, uh, these two people's uh, position and their, and their role playing is already decided by abjection. So, uh, those are the kinds of things I'm talking about here. Right, so let's move on. Uh, so, uh, in, in abandonment politics, which is what this lecture is based on, abandonment can be also based on productivity. Look at the endless amount of abandonment that happens in real life. For example, people retire, men and women, uh, when, uh, they, when they don't earn anything anymore. Uh, you know, they will, alas, they may, alas, discover that their home is not home anymore. Well, you are not earning, therefore you don't have a say in running things. So, you better uh, find your easy chair out there and uh, just pass your time. Okay? Uh, you know, uh, productivity alienation, productivity-driven human relationships, clock time, urban life, uh, relationships based on, based on use and through a norm, all that fundamentally has at its core the abandonment norm. Once you are not there, you will never be there. Hey, look at uh, Corona relief happening now. Uh, uh, those, you know, uh, uh, in New Zealand, uh, a great success story people are talking about, they could, uh, you know, eliminate um, Corona pandemic without uh, much lockdown and so on. There's a great praise for that society. But you know, uh, thanks to Disability Studies Scholarship, we now understand that thousands of people, disabled, elderly and the poor, died in sheltered arrangements uh, as this uh, success story was going on because they were kept out of sight and out of mind because they were non-productive and non-productive means you can be persona non grata, a person without any value. Right, so uh, all across the globe, uh, you know, I, after COVID, isolation based on um, uh, skin uh, contagion, uh, isolation based on contagion, corona contagion, can go, may go, and will definitely go. Okay, but not necessarily isolation based on systemic uh, uh, abandonment, based on systemic isolation. 
where people who are considered non-productive, they are fastened or, sorry, hastened to sheltered arrangements uh, and so on, uh, where they, you know, uh, where they dwindle, dwindle into oblivion, right? So, uh, the Gregor phenomenon, the Gregor, the, the Gregor's condition, um, you know, maybe uh, looks like a reverie, uh, a literature's big idea, a piece of literature's big idea, but I'm afraid uh, that's, uh, that's a phenomenon we need to reckon with when giving, thinking about structural reforms. Okay? Right. Um, let me move on. Um, abandonment can happen when uh, I call it uh, the limits of human generosity. Oh, generosity is a big stuff. Uh, altruism is real. Um, say when there is a, a cyclone rampage in Odisha, uh, Odisha, people can, you know, contribute even from Kanyakumari or New York. Uh, so uh, our hearts go to people in hunger somewhere on other, uh, other parts of the earth. And there are people who offer a prayer, money, uh, maybe a good word, a piece of teaching about that hunger. It can happen. So altruism real, generosity is real, sense of fulfillment that comes with charity is also real. <clears throat> but what is real, also real, is that limits of human kindness is endless. I mean, human kindness is boundless, but human uh, kindness is also limited. Uh, uh, people can withdraw kindness. People can withdraw generos generosity. In fact, people can go uh, jump onto the other side of the fence where they can, you know, uh, they can they can be as cruel as they were kind before, as simple as that. Look at this quote from Metamorphosis. He must go, cried Gregor's sister. That's only the solution, father. You must just try to get rid of the idea that this Gregor, the fact that we have believed it for so long uh, is the root of all our troubles. Well, what is she, what is she saying? Gregor, Gregor's sister, greed, you know, um, fed him, fed him, fed him with uh, leftovers. Okay, you can say leftovers, milk and cheese and rotten vegetables and so on, uh, who is now an insect. At some point, it was becoming too much. Too much is too much. So now she she wants to, you know, move on, as it were. So, uh, well, this is not new, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, um, uh, sometimes uh, the famous celebrity case, Pinky Varani's uh, or, um, defense of euthanasia, happened uh, to, uh, you know, um, well, I, I'm not able to recall the name, um, uh, Aruna Shambhag, yes, luckily. So, uh, Aruna Shambhag, um, she wrote uh, Pinky Varani saying, see, she, she, she's undergoing pain. Uh, she's in a vegetative condition. And uh, there's no use in uh, keeping her alive, but uh, sisters in... King Edward Medical College said, no, we, 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 we want uh, uh, Aruna to be alive because uh, we not only love, uh, we not only serve her, but she serves us. I mean, she gives us special meaning. Uh, 
But the fact is, at the heart of this debate is also uh, the idea that uh, human kindness uh, is not all that unconditional. Well, a dark truth. Okay, so a as a consequence, uh, people can abandon. Uh, unwanted children, disabled people, elderly, people who are not, uh, you know, uh, considered any more useful, uh, the people can abandon uh, societies, uh, political systems can abandon uh, minorities, and, and the list may be endless. Okay, that which is considered not um, uh, considered not worth your generosity, that can undergo abandonment of a cruel kind, and 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 that what it shows now. Right. Okay, abandonment based on the idea of othering. That's my next idea from Diaz. Okay, um, DS is not just about disability, although that's the standpoint position. DS is about structures of all kinds, structures ranging from family, uh, learning systems, um, bureaucracy, uh, you know. Uh, international forums, organizations, st uh, literary structures such as poetry, novel, uh, and many interpretative communities. It's endless. It's a critique. It's an evaluation of those systems. So that's what a disability studies main role. Here, uh, the othering happens. Be uh, othering means somebody is other than, it's not about other than I am. It's about, uh, it's based on the idea of binary, uh, God, devil, uh, beauty and ugly, uh, black, white, great, small, beautiful, ugly, pleasing, disgusting, all those binaries. So binary is there, and the second, uh, for example, good and bad, the bad is, is an inferior to the good. So when people get into that thinking, oh my God, he was so good at the time, now he is very bad. Um, so once you treat, uh, once you put, cast that person in the second position, that is the inferior uh, set of the binary, then other narratives come into the picture. Well, now he's bad. He's not only bad, but he's a nuisance. He's not only nuisance, he's also ugly and uh, he's also, you know, stin uh, the stench in his room and so on. So uh, here, um, in the beginning, you know, Gregor's uh, different appearance was you know, tolerated. In fact, uh, uh, he was not considered different at all. Uh, they were thinking, okay, something is happening, Gregor will change. But slowly, they, they thought, okay, he's becoming a nuisance. Maybe he deserves a separate room. Maybe he deserves different kind of food. Maybe he can be semi-human, uh, maybe he appreciates music, uh, maybe he can know little language, human language. He can't speak but understand. But slowly it comes to the point that, ah, is the other, is not, no, not any more human, is the animal that needs to be thrown away. So, uh, the othering is a slow process uh, and, 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 and it can happen 
and when that happens fully, abandonment is a guaranteed consequence. Okay. The lastly, let me speak about this. What uh, Michael Rowe, uh, R O W E. I'm giving a reference to this beautiful journal article. Uh, he calls it the Gregor Samsa problem. Okay, um, I was talking about Aruna Shambhag here. See, you, um, you take care of the critically ill, who is as critically ill as Gregor, okay, for very long. Uh, don't, don't ever underestimate the pain the caregiver undergoes, uh, despite all affection, despite all caring and so on. They may undergo horror, pain, disgust and so on. But based on that, uh, they may take an action. And the action may include abandonment and sometimes annihilation. So Michael Rowe calls it the Gregor Samson, Samsa phenomenon. Gregor is the uh, critically ill and Samsa uh, being the immediate uh, kin or caregiver and so on. So uh, the, the, the emotions that they undergo, uh, they may take, they may be driven to take action, uh, much to the detriment of the person who is in care. So therefore, uh, care is not uh, an or not a, a political activity, nor it is devoid of complex emotions. So uh, you, we don't have to treat interdependence as a virtue without uh, any problem. So we need to uh, take that seriously. So the Gregor Samsa phenomenon, that is uh, um, phenomenon uh, caring with mixed emotions can um, potentially lead to abandonment. So, and that needs to be uh, resisted. This, this is what Michael Rowe. Uh, Michael Rowe uh, takes the Kafka's uh, metamorphosis example, but runs through his complex emotions as a caregiver about his 17 year old uh, or 19, I forgot the exact fact, who underwent liver transplant as, and was critically ill for some time and eventually died. So he is running through his emotions, which were as varied as varied and rich and, you know, sometimes dangerous as it was in Gregor's family. Right, conclusion. Um, uh, in in lot of senses, uh, disability studies gives us very useful tools to uh, understand him, emotions, uh, um, structural interventions, uh, and, and, and many registers of uh, thought that go into people's sense of uh, self, um, changing realities and care. Uh, and this is what we can learn from a literary masterpiece like Metamorphosis. Thank you.